Hi all and welcome to the third and final part of the end of year review and everything of 2023. It's been a fascinating uh, delve back into the past as it were. Um, lots of uh, progress being made in part two, some booming shows in part one and some booming pieces in part three as well. Plus 2024. This is the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams. Enjoy the show. Right, I'm going to start off by wishing you all a happy new year around the world. And the final year before the nine and the twelve plus one. And I wish to say again thanks to you all for all your efforts in the past year. And thanks for all your donations to keep me going, whether that was Patreon, PayPal, checks, or through the books. And this is the third and final summary of the year 2023, and it will be as powerful as the last two. With many of you hailing the deeper pieces of the THI shows, the normal shows, I thought I would do a recap of the best ones, and trigger some memories of the past year. So many memories and highlights in the past year, perhaps one day it will be looked back upon as the key year in our development. And so here are the key pieces from the year and also the much-awaited forecasts for 2024. We started January with a um, bang piece. And in light of all your efforts in producing the tiny love fest piece yesterday, this piece starts off this year as well as a reminder. And I said in recent shows, late 2022 as it was, it will get ugly in the next two years, not negating the fact that politics has always been ugly. A self-serving pit of self-righteous buffoons pretending to care about life, people, animals, the environment, and worse, people's health. But they never have, have they? The world of illusion ticks on, it seems. Not because of politicians, think tanks, agency clowns, or even the war pigs machine, but because we the people allow it to. We are the problem, I said, and only we are the solution. And it was said that requires people to step out of their heads, their own illusions, the wider illusions, the lies, whether internal or external, the programs, the matryoshkas, their fears, and dare I say it, themselves. And life, like nature, is meant to be simple, yet we make everything complicated. From lifestyles to our love life, to our choice of friends, our choice of employment, and our way of seeing. We have eyes but don't see, we have ears but don't hear, and we have hearts but never learn to use them fully, or in some cases not at all. And all because we allowed ourselves to be created in their image. But did anyone stop to ask what was the image they were presenting? Did anyone ask who's minding my mind? Did anyone ask am I meant to be happy or sad? Did anyone ask am I a crown of creation or a slave? And did anyone ask why they were branded as a child and bound by a religion with no say in the matter? Did anyone ask why they were branded a corporation with the capitalised names? If so, what are you incorporating is the question. And did anyone ask why do I give my power, life and love away to a system that only classes you as a dead entity? Did anyone ask what do you want in life? A fake peaceful existence bound to a system or a vibrant freeing way of life away from it? Now you will all answer on the positive side of those questions. 
but in the main you are lying to yourselves on many counts. And that is the illusion of talking, but talking brings lies and distortions. Your own actions belie those statements and facts, do they not? And as the saying goes, life is lonely at the top. The question is, the top of what? Life is very lonely for the clowns and those of service to self now. Their plans and delusions of grandeur no longer work. But life can be lonely on all levels, particularly for those who dare to speak the truth. And the few that do get pulled apart, dissected, pilloried, questioned, ridiculed, projected at, discarded, targeted with disruptions to their life and what for. All for having the audacity to help people, elevate people, get people to see, get people to hear, get people away from addictions, fear, low self-worth, and also to get people to love themselves and others, to get people to trust themselves and others, and to get people to come together, not divide and conquer, not only each other, but within themselves as well. Does that sound like much fun to you? And I said, if only cloud closed minds came with closed mouths, how much quieter and better the world would be. And I tasked you all to work hard this year to make life easier for everyone, learn to love more, ignore images, labels and projections. Images took on a whole new meaning this year, uh, last year now. Learn life doesn't revolve just around you, which is selfish. Why are you selling fish? Are you an angler? But above all, love, honour, protect and cherish the self and each other. Still in January, this book brought me um, great amusement at the time and much gnashing of teeth after it. <laughs> And it said, the personal I am right badge, all of which comes under two categories or thought processes. Are you in the mind and operating an ego if all you desire is the answer? Because the answer is not the answer or indeed the question either. The question and the answer is the duality. Where do you reside within it? Oh dear. You've forgotten again, haven't you? There is no question or answer. It doesn't exist. Only the illusion of it. But Thomas, quit with the cryptic. I want the answers, some scream. But if you ask me the question, there is no answer. Ponder on that. And I imagined you were all going, Wells the Fargo, is he talking about? Well, my reply is, Wells the Fargo, are you talking about also? And I'm going to say this to all of you listening to this now. You made up your mind. And your replies will be, what have I got to make my mind up on? But I never asked you a question. <laughs> I gave you a statement which you listened to, but didn't hear it. But you asked me to make up my mind, so there must be a question to make my mind up with. There was no question, and so there was no answer. I made a statement, you made up your mind. It was not a question, but was returned with the question because you thought you didn't know the answer. But there was no question, so how can you have an answer? You can't. Your mind was made up by you to think there was a question and an answer. You made your mind up. You created the illusion that it was real. But it isn't, is it? You are thoughts which come from the mind. The word thought is derived from Thoth, who with his partner set, reset your mind. And you made your mind up to match with them. Let us make man in our image and likeness, 
does that ring a ball? Which brings in the Holy Trinity, Baal is Bell, and he's ringing in your heads and minds. You are operating in non-thinking, because when you think properly, the word think becomes truth, honour, integrity, new knowledge. Because only then are you thinking on the right level. If you reverse think and the H becomes silent, you are left with knit. Have you knitted a mind of thoughts that is set in your heads, which is external? Or have you knitted things yourself internally? The question is the left hemisphere. The answer is the right hemisphere. The question then becomes where is or who asked your question and answer? They can't be in the head as your mind is made up. Which means if you have made it up, it is an illusion or a lie. But if you merge the question and answer by merging the two hemispheres and venture into the heart space, things change. Why did they change? Because once you get out of your own way, the heart will tell you there was no question or answer to begin with again. But if you are partially within your mind, you will ask, but where has the question and answer gone to? Well, that is partial progress. The answer or non-answer to whether it was a question or answer will eventually give way to there was no question and there was no answer. Because you forgot your inner knowing. And it becomes it is what it is. But asking someone a question and expecting an answer back on your own experiences or situation is duality. In the triality, there is no question or answer, only a knowing. Knowing me negates the possibility of knowing you. Are you knowing me or will you learn to know you? In a world of no experts, we have to create the teachers to become the experts. In a world of insanity, the people are one sandwich short of a picnic. In a world of hero worship, the people are one person short of the reality. In the world of illusion, reality becomes the conspiracy theory. In a world of confusion, the order of chaos becomes the way of life. In a world of the non-hearing, the music of the spheres plays to the audience of the few. In a world of non-seeing, the one-eyed man becomes the king and seeing is not believing. In a world of non-thinking, the woke becomes the intelligence and the intelligen intelligentsia. In a world of noise and non-clarity, silent lucidity becomes the impossible dream. In a world of throat chakra-based silence, only the idiots talk. In a world of no hope, low, expe low expectation and massive limitation prevails. In a world of sewer people, the gutter becomes the only elevation. In a world of low expectations, the gutter becomes the peak of achievement. In a world of war, all are losers. In a world of greed, most live to only exist. In a world of saviour programmes, the self becomes an irrelevance. In a world of little love, fear becomes the passion. In a world of lust, love becomes a byword. In a world of the linear, one can only ride the hamster wheel. In a world of time, 
one can only be bound to it. The timekeeper becomes the gatekeeper and you threw away the key. In a world of gates, you are the key. In a world of no beacons shining, it becomes the void of the dark. In a world of only seeing the one white light, the colours of the spectrum are lost. In a world of not promoting the all, you are left with just the one. But the anagram of the one singular is Neo, who is a smith. In a world of mindless and heartless chatter, only drama prevails and all the world is a stage. They say that all that glitters isn't gold. I would say that all that are living are not in or of life. In a world of psychology, you are kept in the mind. In a world of peer psychology, you stay in the heart. In February, we did this piece, which played into later pieces. Are we traversing both time and space? Traverse means pass, across, over, or through for the verb. But traverse in the noun format means the act of passing through a gate, crossing a bridge from mid-14th century, from old French traverse. From traverse, meaning a passage by which one may traverse, is recorded from the 1670s. And from that word derives the fear-based spellcasting word of trespass. So trespass means to transgress in some active manner, commit an aggressive offence to sin. From Old French trespasser, pass beyond or across, cross, traverse, infringe, violate. From tres, meaning beyond, from Latin trans, plus passer, go by, or pass. And it also meant enter unlawfully, is at first attested in the Forest Laws of the Scottish Parliament, 1455. And the modern French descendant, Old French transpasseur, has become to be used euphemistically for to die which is comparable to the euphemistic use of crossover and obituary. Traversing a crossing over, the act of passing through a gate or over a bridge, may raise much interest within our group, I said. Yet typically the word salad mistranslation people decided to overlay it with words like trespassing, infringe and violate. We choose our way and method within the triality framework of our own making because their ways never worked, remember. 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 Are we at the dawn of something, not just the Sparog version? Your light needs to shine now to see the path, just like the sun it is dawning on the horizon like an event. Also in February, we mentioned about events coming from the sun and how we should not fear them. And we got 3D confirmation of that statement as several news media are now focusing on what is happening with our sun. But in reality, they have no clue. The mainstream media and supported by the National Zionists at NASA are panicking over sun flares again. Predictably, the doom merchants of the alt media are all going, well, well, you're all going to die. <laughs> all very atypical of unintelligent agents operating within the alt media 
Now there was four to five blasts from the sun over the course of the year at that time and all were beneficial for those operating within the light spectrum not so for the dark forces and I said ignore the doom merchants integrate the energy sent and push forward and there may well be another blast this month as well think of it in terms of an upgrade into March we um, did a couple of pieces, one by a member. And the seven internal chakras plus the five hidden leads to the 12 plus one, it was said. The seven chakras also corresponds with the seven planetary soul development levels as well. And does the seven chakras lead to the seven planets as well? And yes, there is seven declared now, but was once 12 after another certain reduction program but one of our members got thinking and pondering and came up with this piece connecting the seven chakras that aligns with the seven continents although two continents were merged and one left out but it is interesting the one left out was replaced by the waters because at one time in the past we had seven oceans which could also be connected to the chakras. Now the actual earth chakras are 12 plus 1 also and when the 12 chakras are clear the plus 1 opens. No coincidence the plus 1 is in Russia and no coincidence that the two chakras reside in one country also, Britain. And so here is that piece, the seven chakras that align with the seven continents, with Africa supposedly being the birthplace of life, which is, in my opinion, an allegory in meaning to only symbolise it's aligned with the first chakra. Everything is energy. Africa is the first chakra, the root signifying tribal and beginning, the dark continent per se and regardless of ethnicity a person's root or first chakra is their tribal lineage which could be from any country or continent and not necessarily the country land of their birth and this is supported in some way by some members remembering their past lives as being of other colors or races Asia, the second chakra being sacral, signifying creative and innovative, doing or being create, creative endeavours throughout history, very detail oriented and have mastered position. North and South Americas, the third chakra, the solar plexus, signifying will and power, and this is quite telling. The example is the Americas and individual willpower and the erosion or usurping of those powers and rights. Europe, the fourth chakra, the heart, signifying love, romance and easy going. Australia, the fifth chakra, the throat, signifying speech, the throat and the thymus. North and South Poles, the sixth chakra, the third eye, as both face outwards into space, which means a lot. All oceans, seas and bodies of water are the seventh chakra, the crown, which is about fluidity, flow, infinity, and staying connected to the source of life, just as all waters on the planet are. Without these, one is disconnected from Tara, and is essentially a walking dead or a loveless bot. Tara is modified into Tiara, which is a crown with a due L for fake nobility, gods and leaders, etc. Or so they thought. Not this time, it or they won't. And so, for example, polluting the waters of the planet 
is in essence messing, clogging or polluting one's own internal thinking abilities and the capacity to think clearly. Muddy waters will never bring clarity, all silted or salted up. Remember we are 70 to 75% water ourselves, as above so below, as within so without. And so if we make our own waters muddy or salty, did that make our oceans replicate it? And I asked you to ponder long and hard on that. And so the solution to climate change, climate meaning condition, is us. The next piece was uh, following a chat with a member recently brought something else to the fore. The words that are sometimes bandied around within alt-media, but derived from an atypical source that has done much to spellcast us all with their word magic, the New Age cult. Twin flames was the words. Twin flames, also called mirror souls are terms used to describe a relationship ideology rooted in the New Age spiritualism. And the concept has seen increased popularity in recent times. And it promotes the idea of an intense soul connection between two people thought to be each other's half. Which is an interesting concept, no doubt, but often bandied about far too often and doesn't bear reality given the short span of many relationships. But the fact it is called mirror souls is the giveaway to this concept. The mirror we have covered quite a bit in previous shows, because like the mirror, a copy of the copy is the key line in this piece. Another example of the twinning. Mirror souls is based on the idea that sometimes one soul gets split into two bodies. Oops. But mirrored souls is also the remit of the metaverse, is it not? The desire of the off-world again covered in cosmic genetics and also the V-series. They have tried to eliminate souls, then installed two souls in one body and have failed. And this is all connecting to the twinning or hosting of vessels. It is the invasion of the body snatchers again. Still in uh, February, March, sorry. There will always be people who will reject you and us. There will always be clowns, bots and low vibrational people playing games because we aspire to be better, desire to love and care for each other, the people and the planet. There will always be computer trolls, shills and hackers whose only role in life is to destroy not only other people but themselves as well. There will always be egotistic, jealous and envious people around wishing you ill, wrong or misaligned. They are life tests for us all. How we be and react is what counts. What we do and our reactions is what counts. Take a deep breath and just smile. And remember, we are the blueprint. This next piece was in response to the first part of the blueprint being read out in March, where it says, Now is the time, our time to stand up and be proud of what we have presented and get it out as far and wide across the planet to let all the control system know we have arrived. We are prepared to finally take responsibility 
for the mess we all created and wish to rebuild, not fix, all that is broken. A broken control system, a broken planet, broken ecosystem, broken banking, broken food and supply, broken governments and so much more. But the most important that requires rebuilding is us all. We were all broken as well. The lack of genuine love, care, sharing, being nice to each other, service to self only has been the driver of the old world and system of control. A lack of trust between us all allowed the system to deeply divide us on many levels, labels and boundaries. Understanding, heart and compassion must replace revenge, retribution and violence. Replace all the programs they gave to you and you consented to and with and come up with better experiences, plans and ideas to fill that void. Replace all fears with love. Be, be loving. Open your hearts in love, not your minds with fear. Seize every opportunity to grow, love and develop in this key time. Never be afraid to grow, love or develop. Recognise your own value and power and then embrace it. What happens next, many of you will ask. Wrong question and thinking. What will you do next is what is unfolding. What will you manifest? Are you a restaurant waiter or a doer? an achiever, a lover, a carer, a sharer, and so much more. Is it an enormous task that we are taking on? Absolutely. The purpose of it is many fold, but the most important one is, it is the right thing to do. In a world of mistakes that stayed as mistakes because the lessons were never learned, we have an opportunity to reverse or 180 all of them in a defining way. A question that has been repeated much to me recently at the time is who are you? I am me and I am the tiny man with the big heart, big ideas, big goals and oodles of common sense. The final song in that month of March is a message and a question for you all to ask yourselves. Who are you? So, who are you? Yes, you. <laughs> this next section contains many pieces added into the show by the members themselves. Reiterating it's not all about me and that our shows are actually interactive. I pose the ponderings and you are to answer or decipher them. And that makes you think, not just listen. And so in April, much has been said about who you are and indeed the question of who are you. The answer is who are you going to be? rather than who you were. The full spectrum of who we can be has never been fully recognised or embraced due to dark forces, limitation programmes and low self-worth. And I and we at THI endeavour to change all that in emphatic circumstances. And I'm hoping this piece will help you all to remember the I am prayer. I am a child of the original one. I am a ray of the original sun. I am wholeness. I am love. I am the truth that spans the sands of time. I am the rainbow of the very first shine. I am music. I am light. Let the light descend upon me. Guide the way with golden light. 
no other God will stand before me. As I embrace the one true life I was born to live by the will of the original one. I am a face of the original God. I am a voice of the original sound. I am a wave upon the ocean of eternal light. I reach up my arms up unto the heavens and say, I am this I am. The presence of the Ancient One springs forth at my command. I am one with Source. I am this I am. And as I decree it, so it is. And that was all about recognising the self for who you truly are and honouring it. We were never just little me's, if only people can see themselves for what they truly are. A magnificent specimen of life and living with unlimited potential if you get out of your own way. But why do we play ourselves down so much? Why do we let inferior species run us as slaves? Why do we not stand in our own presence and be proud of what we have achieved instead of running ourselves into the gutter? We are all so powerful in our own right and it can be more extraordinary if we all came together. Stop saying impossible and strive to be I'm possible. Stop with the limitation programs and become the power you were born with. Stop with the low self-worth, insecurities and fear and embrace who you really are. We then danced into June with the sacred divine feminine peace. The Divine Feminine comes in all shapes, sizes and colours. She is whole, perfect, beautiful, joyful, blissful, harmonious, kind, inspiring, confident, adventurous, fun and nurturing. A creator, a leader in her own right, equal, full of wisdom, elegant and graceful, with a touch of a wild streak tomboy at times of fancy. She is the one with the divine love, being the oneness of the all. She starts off as the little girl with charm and innocence and curiosity for life around her, being full of joy and wonder. Her laughter trickles across the pathways as she dances away, into the magical world of life. She approaches adolescence with dignity and cherishes her growing body. She dis- discovers her unique talents with love and care that brings much joy in her heart. She learns about her divine mind and the oneness with the all. She remains joyful and full of life and a new experience of being. As a young woman, she learns her body is a temple to be cherished and respected on all levels. When she enters a room, she shines her very unique special star sector with elegance and grace, which is felt by the all. She reaches the level of inspiration in unity with the oneness of it all. Creativity is on a new level of maturity and being. No longer is it done that a woman has to marry or bear children because that is the thing to do. No, she follows her bliss, her joy, what makes her heart sing with glee and dance. New adventures are the way forward to self-discovery on every level. Her love mate will match her frequency on a special connection with the purity of the divine love at their heart points. No longer required to have many to find the one true love. 
the two becomes the oneness with the all, and oh how their hearts beat to the rhythm of joy, bliss and divine love. Seeking to love, inspire, nurture, care, make love from pureness and new adventures to experience the total fullness of life and joy together in unity and respect for one another and creativity on another level. Experience the being of pure love. Reaching the maturity level of the divine feminine, she remains young at heart and full of life. Continuing to explore even more wonders of life on a different level of creativity. Life experiences do not end or become stagnant. There are endless possibilities to become, enjoy and experience the fullness of life on every level of being with the oneness of the all and her love mate. When the time arrives to end this game of life, she gracefully and happily leaves her smile behind and returns home from whence she came. Before she decided to come to planet Earth to experience the joy of being a beautiful human with the oneness of the all and the experience of the absolute enjoyment of being a human. That piece should be taught in schools before puberty to give females or young women the full opportunity and responsibilities they carry. This then would lead to less of them going astray from their divine purpose in life. This next piece was also written by a member in Divine Feminine Mode. Love is all there is and all there will ever be as the oneness experiences it through all of us. Our beautiful soul essence which is cherished beyond time and space always. This is what the divine love has always desired to be and dream it into being. Well I desire it and choose to bring it into being. I love you all oneness always she rises in divine love of oneness to awaken the world in a new way of freedom to experience the one true life with divine love in our hearts as it was meant to be from the beginning of creation and so it shall be i promise this it was decided a long time ago the game changer Love is the way, it always was, it was just forgotten. Remember, remember, remember. We chose this and now it is time for the divine masculine and feminine to shine. A stirring piece that should inspire us all to embrace it and ourselves. And so having touched on the Divine Feminine, we will now touch on the Divine Masculine piece for balance. And the balance is the key to both aspects of it. Just because it says masculine does not mean it does not affect the feminine and vice versa. We both have similar aspects and traits. And if you don't have the traits mentioned, then that is your clue to work towards the traits you lack. The divine masculine most common traits are of the protector and the warrior status, the guardian of the family, tribe, group or people. As the protector and warrior, he must show courage and be fearless in his pursuit and status as the protector. He stands in power not external, but internal power and strength. He brings calm, harmony and peace to every situation he faces with the fierce inner determination of protecting at all costs. He deals with conflicts of all varieties in a balanced manner, exhibits no anger, rage or weakness. He seeks to resolve issues, concerns and conflicts 
not escalate them. He becomes the beacon of trust for those he is designated to protect. He learns to understand his power and endeavours to not use or abuse those powers. He teaches the other males not ready for full responsibility how to be, how to act, how to engage by setting the example. He becomes a pillar of the family, tribe, group or people by caring, nurturing and supporting all of those around him. He brings confidence, trust and surety to all of those around him. He acts with the utmost respect, shows honour to those around him and those who put their trust and faith in him. He acts at all times with decency, common courtesy and integrity. He leads not with an iron fist, but with a calmness, openness and assured manner in cooperation with the all. He must speak and operate in truth and honesty at all times. He must act in kindness, consideration and love. Act with a purpose, show strength, be responsible and show good leadership qualities in accordance with those around him. He must protect and honour the divine aspect of the feminine so that they may complement and embrace each other as equals. There is no hierarchy within this true system. Everything is equal, everything in balance, everything in harmony and harmonic. And so together we become the beacons we should have always been. Into August. And this is um, something done by a member again, following a deep pondering I had and a download to go with it. And I said something is missing as we are still seeing the women acting out at times when things should be a whole heap better. And following certain events that took place earlier this year, plus the revocations done in the past, this was written by a female member and is not added to by me. And here is what it says. Thomas has exposed in the shows and most recently in From His Story to Our Story Plus 20, the fact that women in history forsook our men and chose the gods instead. Chose them to the point of mating with them and even destroying or killing our men. And this rejection of our men continues on today. The rejection of the good solid guys in favour of the bad boys. And this behaviour does not make sense and we know that when things don't make sense, it's a programme. Perhaps this behaviour is a sort of penance for the rejection of good men, or perhaps the result of the feelings of unworthiness within the female. For the women, once their consent was obtained, realised they'd consigned themselves into slavery and a breeding programme. They experienced great misery, realising what they had thrown away, and disdained up to and including murder in exchange for the bait of advantages. This choosing resulted in servitude, vicious competition between the females, deep shame, horrible mishandling, including rape and babies taken away, repeatedly selling one's soul for any favours or for survival, throwing each other under the bus and the loss of the magnificent mothering instinct to protect our offspring and partner at any cost. And perhaps at this point you are thinking, well, that doesn't pertain to me. But well, how has that served us in the past, ignoring the plight of others? Maybe it's not a description of you, but remember... We are the seed sowers. 
we release the frequency with all our loving heart intention. And thus the changes begin to coalesce within ourselves and then roll out over the whole universe. Imagine the frequency of our loving intention outflowing with power, mighty power like a massive wave spreading over our whole planet, spreading throughout our whole system, solar system, spreading throughout our galaxy and spreading out and permeating our whole universe. Restoring brokenness, bringing systems back to the spiral flow of loving, of honouring, of valuing, of respect and truth. And so here we go. To revoke means to invalidate or cause to no longer be in effect, as by voiding or cancelling. Re equals regarding, voke, to be completely worthless or useless, or, a bit like woke really, to have little or no value, in reference to farthings, obsolete British units of currency worth a quarter of a penny. The revocation, we hereby revoke all connections, cords, contracts, frequencies, energies and agreements, manifesting in rejection of the human male and the divine masculine. Rejection in the form of devaluing, false judgment, disdain, disrespect, ridicule, misrepresentation, disregard, using as in the form of parasitic behaviour. This includes instigating the ousting of his children from a previous partnership. We dissolve and render null and void the contract and consent with the shame and the self despite up to and including self-harm, unwillingness to open our hearts and bodies to our partners, loss of tenderness towards our offspring that was replaced with a critical and judgmental attitude and a loss of tenderness in general. A loss of self-love and compassion towards ourselves in the graceful and powerful aging process to the point of self-mutilation in the form of toxic injections, surgeries and foreign body implants etc. All this resulting in a detachment from who and what we are. And this revocation includes any and all programs and or program behaviour that we and our past generations have adopted that cause or have caused further or more disconnection from our male human counterparts. We do this through all time, all space, all dimensions and all realities and include our progeny in this life, past lives, and other dimensions, as well as our ancestors, thus clearing our DNA. We dissolve, sever, and render null and void these agreements, consents, accords, and detractions. We hereby transmute the frequencies, energies, and vibrations from the negative, destructive forms into loving, embracing, incubating, accepting, trusting, valuing, honouring, respecting, shielding, protecting and fearlessness which defines the magnificence of who and what we are. The hub of the spiral of life, the womb and wheel of life outflowing, the safe place to be held, accepted and nurtured, We set ourselves free from all programs, overlays and illusions. We embrace ourselves, one another, our magnificent men and our tender children. We then integrate these transmuted energies and make ourselves whole again. We embrace the love flow inherent in the feminine that is aroused by the frequencies of our divinely masculine men. We agree that our unions will be without fear, competition, envy, jealousy, possessiveness or any other low frequency programs and or overlays. 
We also consent to modelling this here by revocation and declaration so that those coming after us will be informed and set free. We agree to way showing to other females, young, old and yet to be, in order that we are all set free. We acknowledge and understand that there are good, amazing, magnificent, courageous, strong, tender, loving men who simply want to embrace and protect his woman partner. And we want you to know that we await you to embrace you with loving arms and hearts. And so it is. Something for all females to get behind, I said, as finger pointing at this stage of the game is pointless. Pardon the pun. And I asked all those on me we chat to put I agree. Now for those who read the transcripts, read out aloud to yourself and those who just listened to the show, say agree as well. And we played a final song then, and it was from all men to women about openness, acceptance and embracing, and about opening your hearts in acceptance and embrace it and the love that goes with it. But this was another piece written by a female member that bears deep consideration for male and female alike. The womb is the fertile soil of creation and life. The womb is not a place to store fear and pain. It is a place to create and birth new life. The earth is the fertile soil of creation and life. The earth is not a place to store fear and pain. It is a place to create and birth new life. They are one and the same, as within, so without. Fear in the womb of the women can create undesired outcomes for what she is creating. The root chakra, the base, the foundations of women are of the masculine energy. Trust, safety, protection, provisions, truth, strength and surrender. The opposite for the men, their base root chakra is feminine in energy. If she is birthing children, fear in the womb can cause a whole range of issues for her offspring, including physical, developmental, social and emotional challenges often labelled as special needs children, miscarriage and infant death as I know from personal experience. If she is creating, building, growing, fear in the womb can have undesired outcomes with all of her work. It is especially important in this time of new humanity's creation to have women and men in a state of deep love, trust, support and safety. Treat every woman as if she is carrying and protecting your offspring, your seeds, your future. She is and we are together. The masculine and the feminine in divine union are creating the new blueprint for humanity in spirit and in our physical reality. It needs both energies. The masculine energy is vitally important but it will come through the womb. The women need to be open to receive the penetration of the masculine energy and support it gently while conceiving, holding and birthing the new earth. Physical with the earth, the womb, the feminine and the love. Spiritual with the universal, the rod, the masculine and the trust. Dark with the shadows, light with the gifts. We need it all. Right, into September. And uh, as the world of traumas and 2D thinking and operating pervades our lives more and more each day, pictographs shown to us as children, displayed as learning, and yet does it not create a different reality? 
the sky and other objects displayed as reality within a 2D format and deep thinking unconscious sub-reality of how things should look. But it isn't and it doesn't, does it? Mind beam overlays to take us all away from reality into a one and zeros world of binary thinking, decision making and their reality. A non-harmonic duality dance with a technological subset of fake reality and f everything further away from source and our triality reality where we decide what is real and what is not. The blaring of reality is buried deep within your neural connections all formulated by education, television, movies and books. And whilst those four disciplines are said for us to learn, the great question is to learn what? How to be violent? Kill each other? Create materialistic fantasy lives born only out of debt? Stunt our knowledge as we learn utter drivel? Develop envy, bitterness, greed and confrontation? Learn that the box, whether it is a TV, laptop or computer, is our new god, AI or otherwise. And the descent into 2D of their world increases at a pace. Technology abounds everywhere, all perpetrated by a creepy sky god in a cloud that is riddled by fear of what we will do, or why else would they be spying recording and 24-7 surveillance. The Two Souls project has been going on since before the Arya fell of how to install two souls into one vessel. That didn't work though, thankfully. But mind memes like Twin Souls and Twin Flames were created with which to merge with their Metatronic overlay creation. But 2D and binary represents their world, which people tie themselves to regardless of whether they are awake or not. Have you noticed that everything is drab or flat, even colours? Yet why in the dream world are colours more vibrant, more plentiful, more vivid? Have you ever thought of why is that the case? Because you see with your heart, soul, spirit eyes, not the vessels. You can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark. But the real tragedy is when men and women are afraid of the light. And that piece went into October as well. And I mentioned about the maps piece uh, in an earlier show and how clearly they have overlaid us with their Go Ogle map. Well, you can ogle at it all you like, but it is not your version, is it? And what that means is your view, understanding and perception of the world and everything is formed by something or someone else. All created by 2D images, I majors, mirror magic and supposition. A book, a picture or a movie are all 2D images that we have accepted as our reality in a supposed 3D world. But assumption like logic is not fact it is the predisposed positions of other people. Predisposed means putting someone in a frame of mind to be willing to do or accept something. But pre means before, then dispose. So before they dispose of you, they get you in a frame of mind to then be willing or accept your fate. 
You do realise that. But will you use your real eyes and come to the same conclusion? Is that they have been imposing upon us a 2D world and reality? The ultimate in mind means the perfect form of subtle devolution all done by accepting their views and opinions of your world. And in essence they have manufactured and overlaid the world of how they wish you to see it. And what is worse is we went along with it. If a picture paints a thousand words, who is the painter? I said some time back this planet is all about shrinking everything in, into smaller and smaller units. Smaller people, animals, trees, fruits, eyesight, brains, frequency, heart, feelings, emotions and all to make people believe and stay in the mind. But the great question is who was minding your mind? And the planet of devolution, not evolution, is what has unfolded. Let us make man in our image. Plus, is it the case of let's make man believe in our image that we present to them? The 2D world mind meme is another of their overlay worlds and a devolution program. Now can you see? What do you see? What did you not see? The latter is the main thing. You can't see the forest for the trees. Except in the petrified forest, there is no trees and so no forest. But everyone who visits there believes it is a forest. But that is their 2D mind meme overlay world perspective. Because in 3D and your world, there is no forest. They're creating a movie for you, like almost like the Westworld series, an image of the fake reality they wish for you to not only see, but believe in it as well. But it's not real, is it? Everything is backwards, everything is upside down applies here. Everything stated or produced as external when it is internal. Like the blame game, it is all pointing away from us. But that's not correct in the issues, is it? The solution then can only be to go within. Nature, nurture, the planet, portals, stargates, a healing machine, treasure, source the creator, the universe, a god, the sun, the saviour, infinite consciousness, the universal library, a spaceship, music and love. You all do realise all of those things are contained within you. All of them. The question then becomes... Why do you deny yourselves those gifts? Your reality then becomes playing the role of the victim victimizer and the Egyptian river, no not the sticks, but denial. And who needs the cabal or control us when we operate in denial and victimhood? Perhaps a New Year's resolution is required to stop playing the victim and denying yourself your own power and it's time to then embrace and become that power and use it in an all-encompassing way. Those who follow the small part of themselves become small people and devolution and those who follow the great part of themselves become great people and ultimately evolution 
A reminder from the Cosmic Genetics. It said, Dimension 2 is a 3D instinct and 3D data relay. The realm of the bio-human bots. Which begs the question, were the rigor mortis people seen on videos recently just animated figures? So when not animated, they go back into their natural state of a test dummy. Or were they pulled back into 2D, the realm of the human or the bio-human bots? And when you connect that to the saying carbon or cardboard cutout, are the 2D animated bots just carbon or cardboard cutouts? Are they now being cut out forever? Remember a 2D world is not carbon based. Are you connecting the dots now? The question is, will you go with them or not? Saturday, October the 14th at 10.35 a.m. may not be recorded as a morning any different to any other. A few got to witness it on a wider scale. Many didn't and many did not recognise the significance of it. But that Saturday marked a major turning point on many levels. It will go down as just a transit of a moon across the life-giving sun in many circles. But this was different. The ring of fire, as it was dubbed, as our moon traversed across the fiery opening. The deeper question remains as to why we have never heard of the ring of fire previously. One look in the search engine yields no historic or explanation results, only about the ring of fire of the Pacific Rim. <laughs> he said Rim. Um, why was the moon smaller? And so it never covered the whole of the sun. Why was there no visible reduction in the sunlight, despite it covering 90% of the sun? And these are the main ponderings for you all to consider. And here's something else to consider. It was not our moon, but their moon. The moon of the dark forces. And yet again, there was no evidence of our moon in the sky, only a shadow dancing across the sun. Our celestial star that never rises nor sets, only emitting frequencies of a higher and higher nature. Why was this different? Did you notice the difference in the angle of the object traversing? Why did it come in at 12 to 1 o'clock when the last solar eclipse on the East Coast seven years back came in at 3? Is that evidence of a shift of the planet? This was different whereby a full solar eclipse blacks out the sky. This one didn't. This object was smaller and so did not cover the sun. At the maximum coverage, an extraordinary thing happened. The object was swallowed by the sun, sent in a spiral, and the sun consumed it. At that point, Rahu, not the moon, was transmuted into something entirely different. The portal had opened up and Rahu was swallowed and transmuted into an object of the light. The ultimate in the light overcoming the dark in spectacular view for all to see, particularly the dark forces. This was their event, or so they thought. But what they will have witnessed was not the black sun, 
but their own moon being bathed in not only sunshine but earthshine as well. The side facing us became a ball of light, not the dark, non-reflective world of previous years. Ketu will undergo the same transmutation within the southern hemisphere as well. The celestial dance between the sun and the false moon, between light and dark, was rendered null and void and a further reclamation unfolded within this solar system. Swathes of pure light burst forth and punctured the dark object and the transmutation began. The light enveloped it in its own special way as the dimming effect was negated in a blaze of glory. No longer their night creep will hold fear over us. The dark again rendered mute and now bathed in the light and the heart shine. The download was the word Idalia, which was the storm that breezed through Florida and particularly the Stargate at Sarasota a few months earlier, although the media kept posting it as a future event, which was a sign to me. Idalia means behold the sun. Saturday, October the 14th became B and hold the sun. Embrace and integrate further the new frequencies generated from that event. The celestial dances and the music of the spheres increases now and that will bring deep change within you all. The energies and the higher frequencies also will and has brought much change within the past few months. Embrace and integrate them as well. That event was a genetic altering DNA upgrade for those ready to receive. The sun projected the spirals all around it, which matched the spiral wave that came from the earth just over a week ago, like some celestial union. I said nature was fighting back as well. Is that another example? The dark have lost another power and energy harvesting mechanism and now they have to face their own maker and plight. Their dark overlords will not be saving them this time. They will not be able to save themselves, never mind you. October the 14th was a gift from the heavens, the world of Prav and the celestial elevator that rises in vertical time and bypasses the astral harvesting realm. A macabre altering path as well, as the Trinity combined to show the path of redemption and an eventual return to our former selves and the path of the light. October the 14th was designated as a visual event, but it was much more than that. It was an internal event where and when the truth resides only, and an opportunity for those on the golden path to feel and experience the change, the wonder, and the awe of the power of the light. Into November, and there was one big piece in November, and this is in two parts, and there's a forewarning in overview now. Well, following on from the Tuesday show of From His Story to Our Story Plus 23, and I said one hopes you all have a deeper understanding of what is love and what is life. And the questions now are, do you men understand the woman and honour her role? Do you women understand the man and honour his role in life and love. And that is the takeaway for you all from that show. Division between us, the hierarchical programmes between us, a lack of honour between us and a lack of trust between us has just not worked. What will you do to correct it? Will you be more honest with yourself 
and the opposite sex? Will you find your right man to negate and correct the image and the blood of the first man, if that first man was not suitable? And I said this will be one of the most powerful pieces on THI shows. It will also be one of the most triggering as well. And I said, often people tell me that piece was about me. And often it's not. But if the person was triggered and then connected to that piece, it means the piece revealed hidden truths about themselves. And the song, You're So Vain, I guess you think this show is about you, don't you, springs to mind. And there's about 25 people who... uh, just jump back into Dublin then. But often things outside and inside the group unfold that brings forth these pieces. It reveals itself and I ponder and then write about it. Often the more personal level pieces comes at a cost to me as projection, deep questioning and challenging the narrative bursts forth. But that to me means it hit home. Not only for those who do project, but much further afield. The Santis told us of the power of love, which has many components to it. Our recent piece, What is Love? and our failed attempts to define it, shows how much it has been lost by all the people on this planet. The love of life and things, the love of people in general, and the process of being in love with a person. All three are very different, but all three are essential components of life operating in a better way. Love is the harmony glue that holds the light forces together. Love is the source spark that can ignite us all. Love is the connection to source many seek, internally seek, and even those that seek external gods via religions know deep down inside they seek the wrong god. But love is a frequency of a much higher purpose when you have learned to develop the self enough. The love frequency is carried by the music of the spheres that once experienced will never be forgotten. Because only then can you truly understand love and its frequency. The dark forces have done everything to dampen love with their automated bot-like people devoid of compassion, empathy and love. Those people are like the migrants arriving offshore in a small raft upon a vast ocean. In essence, they are an island. Cut off from the mainland and they are requiring external help with which to feed, clothe or provide energy to. In overview, they are the harvesters, seeking to draw energy away from you when all the energy you need is within you in many aspects because if you don't operate in love then you operate in fear which again is a harvesting mechanism but do we understand love clearly not passed off as lust in many cases because we haven't defined too well the rules of engagement surrounding relationships If it is just a sexual component and no strings attached, why are people afraid to say the truth and ask of what they want? If it's a relationship with the sexual component and let's see how we get along before making a full union, why do people not just say that out loud? Or if it is, I would like a relationship and not the sexual component can happen now or I can wait. That is defining a relationship in full truth, is it not? But that's not how we engage each other, is it? In truth. 
a definite no. Why? Because of fear, generally due to rejection or what people think about you. And so we end up going into a pre-crafted ritualistic dance and chicanery that frankly in overview is bizarre. It leads to a merry dance like some jungle birds preening and dancing round plus overspending to impress and waffling and talking platitudes. People lying about their wealth, manhood, status and many other things. That is not a pursuit of love. That is a game of playing love. That is a big difference. The love aspect is defined by the three questions of which relationship you would like to have with a prospective partner. Because then it is based in truth, not lies. Men just want to get us into bed is the cry. Did you ask them that first to define it? No, you just made bland statements like a mainstream media clan reader. Is that saying men only want sex? Are women telling us that only men want to have or initiate sex? Because that is not true, is it? More so in the last two generations. Women only want us for our money or estate, men cry. But did you ask them if that was the case before starting a relationship? No. So the same applies, doesn't it? Relationships where one partner is controlling the other is not a relationship or love. It is a control system, as within and so without them. Is this the way love and life is supposed to work? Has it worked for you all? If the answer is no, then the next question is, why didn't or don't you change it? And therein lies the overarching and overviewing problem, doesn't it? We'll all blame other partners, it's what we do. But do we ever question our own part in a failed relationship? The answer to that is no. Because the next stage of a failed relationship is to garner favour within your circles of only your side of the story, which typically means demonising the other partner. It all goes bitter and twisted, which means you are operating in the low vibrations, right, low vibrational frequency bands. And what is worse is, some in the circle go along with that person's point of view, largely without being near what actually went on in that relationship. And in essence, those people are actually worse than the broken partner, because they are operating on the emotions and the opinion of others and not thinking for themselves. But just think back over your lives of how many of those circumstances have dictated your future. In most cases, wrongly. Only to find out later the opinion you followed was wrong. And that happens in all walks of life, not just broken relationships. But the fallout of a relationship and convincing your circle is the labels then become protected and harsh words are spoken about the opposite gender. Again, is that how we should use our energy? Is that not a total waste of energy? And the difference is an advanced person goes within and heals and then goes to look for a new love that was lost or not delivered by the previous partner. But that's not what happens, is it? Deflection, blame, shame, guilt, anger, revenge, rage, all projected out at others, and no personal reflection of, could I have done this better? Could I have done more to make the other person better? Did I show my love, care and support enough? 
that I operate fully in love. And these are the questions of the self that takes place within a person operating from the heart and a higher soul development level. Personally, some of you have seen the fallout of my engagements with some people that were in the group at one time or another, although two of them were not a relationship or a sexual encounter. But all of them launched a tirade of lies against me. My reaction was to ignore it. Why? Because the truth doesn't have to defend itself. Arguing over the truth is ego to get external approval from those around you, as I just mentioned. And one member said to me, you should defend yourself against the lies. I said, that is their problem, not mine. But some people are believing the lies about you. And again, that is their problem, not mine. And that is an example of self-mastery. I knew the truth, so I didn't have to defend it and just said, time will tell for the liar and also the people that believe the lies. And I chose not to waste my energy on people who live for the lie. I respected their choice and moved on. But this is what creates the toxic divide between the two genders. And yes, there is only two genders, another program designed to install false realities. But how can love thrive in that toxic environment? It can't, it won't and it hasn't. And so with love in descendants as it currently is, another component takes its place. Fear. And like I've said in many of the shows, in the absence of love, fear reigns. Love is higher vibrational, fear is low vibrational. Which means you cannot love if you are low vibrational. And subsequently you cannot fear in true high vibrational state. And sadly with most people operating in fear despite repeated denials. And so love passes them by. Many will tell you that they want love, but is it really true? Females flaunting themselves is not seeking love, just external gratification, which is ego. Females flirting with others with no intentions of taking it further is also ego and seeking external gratification. And neither are examples of seeking love which resides within the heart-soul-spirit package, not the external meat suit to protect it. Men preening, posing in sporting arenas, gyms and bars is not seeking love either. Again, it is just ego and external gratification. But there are other components of this that is created by the dark forces who oppose love at all costs, where mind memory comes in and people adapt to it. Love hurts, they say. But how can love hurt when it's the spark of source or the music of the spheres or how your body operates better when you are within that frequency? It can't. The love hurts aspect is when it ends. And yes, we've all experienced that type of hurt. But the heart always mends. It's the head aspect of it that doesn't. Which is why the head takes over after a failed relationship and makes everything look, feel and be toxic. The second part of that um, long piece, um, while sex is a separate component of a relationship, 
although more women than men think they go together due to societal pressure and the lying games. But has not sex been degraded exponentially over this lifetime? Sex is wrong, sex is dirty, spoken of in hushed tones. Says who? Does anyone ask as to why a pleasurable act between consenting adults is classed as dirty? No, there's that lack of thinking again and accepting the opinions of others. Where is the triality and where is you? Blindly accepting the opinions of others is negating your own responsibility and you will never evolve to a higher plane doing that. But most of that speak came from the church, it should be remembered, whilst they committed unspeakable sexual acts with children in many cases. Another thing the church denounced as evil was self-love with masturbation. What is wrong with self-love? Nothing. It is the ultimate in getting to know yourself, is it not? Loving yourself, relieving stress, sexual frustrations, exploring yourself and sexuality. But this act and its negative spin has largely pushed upon men and boys as something they only do. But it's not true, is it? And yes, many females will be blushing now, arguing with themselves, saying, Who, me? Never. Uh, yes, you. And it is yet again pushing negative things as a male-only problem, when it's actually not a problem at all, only a guilt program being rolled solely upon men. But did anybody ask the question, if masturbating is so bad, why did Source create us in a way that it was possible? Something the mind-controlled religious people need to think long and hard about. Pardon the pun. So what comes first, love or sex? Well, it depends on the perspective, doesn't it? The first point of contact between people is based upon the sexual attraction. So in that case, the sex comes first. But life and programs have muddied that also, have they not? Because society says it must be love first, then sex. But that is not what happens, is it? Sexual attraction is the first thought process. Or more to the point, the first engagement of each other's frequencies is what has really taken place. If there is no sexual attraction between one or other of the people, then it is unlikely that engagement between those people will lead to a love-based relationship. The engagement of the sex act, sex act then creates the exchange of energies, frequencies, DNA, images and so much more, which then determines whether the love is really there or it is just a pleasurable sex act. Love at first sight is another perspective on this and some would argue it is not real or possible. You cannot possibly love a person you've just met. That is lust, people would argue, and for the most part, correct. But as too few on the planet understand how we are all frequency emitters and receivers, then this component of engagement is lost on the many. Love at fair sight is a higher frequency based experience based generally upon past lives and some memory recall. It feels like you have known that person forever, and yet you've only just met. How is that possible? Well, it is possible because those two people recognised each other's frequency instantly, 
like a calling or an echo from the past. Science or education will not tell you that, as they only operate within 2 and 3D thinking spectrums. But don't believe that to be the case, and please explain this example then. A man experiences having sexual relations in his dream time with the same woman that he doesn't know on the physical plane, and also whilst he is married for 12 months. Then the woman from the dream time suddenly turns up in the physical realm and presents herself to him. Now the female from the dream turned up around the time I'd just split from the ex-wife. And she revealed she too had been having sexual dreams with the description of the man having his dreams with her. That is not possible, many will proclaim, but that is my truth, as that is what happened to me. So how did that happen? Frequency emitting and the receiver picked up. That is how it works. All of which makes flirting and flaunting a very bad act, as it is sending wrong, damaging and hurtful frequencies to others who can't read the intentions, and even to those who can. Playing games with love and emotions, which is a common theme with females, is not how life should be. It is a cruel and brutal way to live, when so much around us is of a bad or poor nature to experience, these actions makes life unbearable for many. A recent show revealed 37,000 of 49,000 of suicides were white males. 80% of suicides in America are males. And that is one of the reasons as to why that shouldn't be done. And people can rail all they like at that statement, but the facts speak for themselves. But it's not only in America, is it? Nope, it goes further afield and is a particularly poor trait of the white race. White and black races in the Western world are particularly prevalent in this poor behaviour. Women chasing shekels, overspending on material items, getting plastic surgery and other improvements often to the cost of the family by means of debt and overconsuming is the way of life now for many Western women. All of which is a purely selfish trait and behaviour that bears no consideration for others. In essence, the love of money has overcome the love of love itself. It is creating an abomination of self-image, which is what the above just revealed. But your true image is about love, loving, caring and nurturing. And if you are saying now, well that is not me, fine, I'm glad to hear it. But just you, is not what we're talking about here. It is the overview and the wider ranging problem. Making fun of men and the demeaning of men was not created by women, but adapted by them all orchestrated by the system via the likes of Tavistock, the feminist movement and even the multi-letter gender crew. The biggest issue and driver of this is the advertisement industry. It went from seeing women as sex objects and figures of fun to demeaning men. But did anybody stop to think neither of those programmes were right? Well, clearly not. And the latest for the advertising programme is Mixed Families. And it's also an exercise of can you spot the white person? And these are all the ways they keep people divided and at each other's throats. But only we can adapt to them 
and we all did that with gusto. Advertising is conditioning, is mind controlling and corralling people into taking their choices. Cultural dynamics are created by advertisement agencies as well. Look at how they have denigrated the white male and females in the past 50 years with their programs. Look at how they moulded the black people with their foul-mouthed, demeaning and violent lyrics with hip-hop and rap. But did you also notice the majority of black hip-hop and rap singers are also gangsters? Which is why many of them are now dead, in case they talked as well. It's all a programme. And what it shows is, A, we follow poor programmes all too easily, B, it plays into hierarchy games, and C, it shows we have all criminally lost our way. But it is also about the image it presents, is it not? Do you know where all that comes from? The Bible. We will make man in our image. An image has a much deeper meaning. Now, as we found out in the From His Story to Our Story Plus 23 show, the image of the spirit and the blood. But what if the story of the off-world coming down to mate with humans was not just a past event, but a now event? If a load of off-world males in meat suits were mating with women, in select countries based upon their genetics, then all of their children would be born in their off-world image, would they not? Could it also explain why so many children are feral in various parts of the world? What about the black-eyed children? In whose image are they? But all this debauchery, poor images, devaluing of morals, undereducated violence and criminal actions have all contributed to the fall of man and woman. If we didn't stray so much from the wisdom teachings, this would have never have got this bad, this far or for this long. None of this would unfold if we had retained love compassion and caring either. And people in overview are like a dead fish. It rots from the head down and our heads were filled with the rotten stench of a lack of morality and the ability to do and be a model human. The peak of being human starts and ends with love. It is the solution to all the problems. People who deny the love and the frequency of it because of fear will always remain low vibrational and will be stuck within the astral realms. That means you cannot develop on a planetary soul level and will repeat the same level over and over again until you learn. The reason being is love is a prerequisite trait when on the higher planes, just like personal responsibility. So just how do we get this far into the non-spiritual pit and why? Because the dam became damned, love became fear, heart became the head and the free became controlled. A massive indictment of those who came before us and as all now. We are the effect, but the cause is not applying the source-based rules on what is the divine feminine and what is the divine masculine. For women, the three main traits of divine feminine are love, caring and nurturing. For men, it is the ruler, warrior and protector of the clan or family. And that is not to say that women cannot be warriors and protectors. They can, but it is not their primary roles. 
That is not to say men can't be loving, caring and nurturing, as that again, that is not their primary roles. And it's all about the balance and the archetypal man and woman are in balance and so in harmony with the all. But women, as we have found out, are not operating within the love band. And so the whole thing collapses for both. And it makes no difference which gender is worse or better, as it's not a competition. But the females have become so dominant in the masculine traits that means love, caring and nurture and false but also the warrior and protector roles as well. The men become dominant in the current feminist of agendas of women must be strong, and while some are, many are not, and so the whole thing collapses again. It's all about the balance. But to restore balance, the female must return to the love, caring and nurturing aspect to then allow men to reclaim their duties back as well. And many people will say, why don't men just take the roles back? Because you would have two masculine traits on the same level, and that will make things worse, not better. And because the masculine platform is currently occupied by a more masculine feminine, and the men have become more feminized to counteract it, but the amount of women I've heard saying or revealing they are frightened of being loved is the most alarming of all. How can you not want to be in and of love? Is that telling as to how far we have fallen? And in what world is that beneficial to us? It's not except to the dark forces. And essentially we are doing their work for them, because love conquers all, remember. But here's the current score on that. Love and shadow work, nil, fear, one. Those scores will never fix things on this planet. And until that is corrected, humanity is and will be a long way from restoring itself fully. The question of how did you love still remains. But after From His Story to Our Story plus 23 show, it now asks, who did you love as well? Is it not better to have loved and lost than to have never love at all this in part was written by one of the members I have added to it minorly for balance and the classic divine masculine and feminine principles but the need to create the self mastery within you is more prevalent now than ever the observe don't absorb the protection of your energy and field we have had, are and will receive all the support we need to accomplish our individual and collective goals. The will of the Creator works through us all. I am you, you are me and we are one. The frequency is flowing. It will seem like magic out of thin air. But remember, this is what you came here for at this juncture of time. It's all in the divine plan. Flow with it. Watch your thoughts now and learn to master them. We are all adept at this. Just remember. Keep the connections open and familiar. Choose happiness and joy. We all deserve to be happy and reside in the joy of it. Open your heart to love. It was meant and planned a long time ago. The oneness of it all. Do not fear it. Open your heart because you came here to experience it and bring back the love and then you will know. Most of all, love yourself, 
you are whole, worthy and so loved that may seem from afar, but it's actually within. You are a magnificent specimen, a spark of the creator you have just forgotten. We are, we are loved by all of the light warriors above. They are supporting us. Now go ahead and remember who you truly are and shine on. As for the past, it's just a memory like an old movie. Let it go as we are creating a new one now. Surrender the caterpillar, become the butterfly and learn to fly. Remember to learn to trust you, trust me and let's combine into the all. We do the works, we orchestrate it and we play it through each other. Believe it through your heart and soul, one on one with the one. A fantastic piece and one we should all embrace and act upon. Many will have asked how would I follow plus 23. Well I guess with the last pieces I did. Oops I did it again. But we will end with the same ending from Tuesday's show as a further reminder. At the end of the day, it's all about love, the attainment of love, aspiring to love, the embracing of love. To be in love means one has to first love themselves. One then has to dance in love, envelop in love, rise in love, and when mixed with another being of higher love, then the sparks of creation flies. It bristles with excitement, joy and happiness. Happiness creates and operates along the golden path. Do you care to join it? The question then remains, will you become and be love, my love, our love, and become part of love for the all? The solution is we all rise in love and take the golden path together and create and manifest our own future. Return to love and risk it all indeed. Why is it a risk? <laughs> right. So what do or should we expect from 2024? A good question. And it took much pondering on what to reveal or will be revealed. With the prediction of COVID as a narrative being almost spent now, the ugly stage is upon us as the stark reality and truth of what COVID was really all about will come to the fore. The media will suffer badly in the coming year as more people will see through their lies. The death spiral of the mainstream media will continue to plummet which enhances our chances of taking over the narrative and delivering hope, common sense and truth. I would expect a breakthrough on the blueprint next year as 2023 was more about planting the seeds per se. On a personal level, I'm hoping to be in use much more next year delivering radio shows with others and potential speeches with the authorities as they are badly needed now. I was called to go deeper with my narrative in July of this year, and that has been reflected within the shows. The speeches that are required are not necessarily about the blueprint, but all about what is life, value, togetherness, human, real, time and love. And we have to get people thinking long and hard about those topics to then be able to create the platform for a fresh start with the blueprint. As launching the blueprint with the current thinking patterns and mindset will not lead to a more dynamic and positive changes that this planet needs. 
Financial issues globally will increase this year as well, as the flow of money decreases every year and desperation by the shekel people will increase accordingly. The financial system is permanently broken, as we revealed five years ago, and with new, no new money coming in since the closure of the trust in December 2020, that will only get worse. Three years ago, I revealed that, and most people thought I was talking shit. I guess time told on that as well. Yes, they will try and push their fresh air tokens called crypto, but the, with the rise of people around the world with increased mistrust of the system, I cannot see that prospering. Bearing in mind, should it take off, measures can and will be taken to counteract it. The kickback and pushback against the AI will increase next year as well. More and more people will realise it, it is another control st structure. Certain steps have already been taken to counteract it and explains why it isn't working too well. But next year, or this year now, we'll see a massive increase of interest with the Jewish narrative coming to the fore. In fact, Israel, Jewish and all things Talmudic will be at the forefront of everything this year. The exposures of the Jewish narrative, who and what they are, what they really stand for on this planet will all rise within the collective consciousness. Our From His Story to Our Story book will provide the balanced thinking and thought processes to aid all peoples about the truth that will be coming out. The sheer ugliness of that program that involves business, law, finance, religion and so much more will be tough to take for people outside of THI. The Israeli war narrative between the Jews and the rest of the world will start to collapse next year under the volume of people finally seeing through that illusion. It is coming. In essence, it is the final act of the play or movie. The final takedown of the Koshi Koshers here. They think they were all okay and they were guaranteed the promised land. No, you were fooled and lied to. And unless you all begin to see the truth and apply common sense and engage people in an equal way, then the only road or path facing them is not their promised land but their promised destruction. We at THI have done everything to try and help and support that race, but sadly to no avail, that will be costly to them. The medical professions will face tough and potentially hostile public reaction at the death rate increases and the lies of the jabs being ex exposed further. They will try to invent a new virus or some increasingly virulent strain of flu. Keep a close watch on Argentina, as they have installed a Jewish puppet in there, just like Ukraine. Is Argentina the next theatre of war, operations or distractions? Remember, Argentina is another white race country. A potential push east, or west, sorry, by Russia. In accordance with the old Rus boundaries may well unfold this year. This brings in all the former Rus countries on the west and south of Russia. The question is, 
are the heirs pushing this? Is this a prelude or a potential of the 40,000 year return promised with the Santis? Will our true gods return and replace the dark forces worship of Isis, Osiris, Horus, Yahweh, Jehovah, El, Lilith, Samuel, Moses, Jesus, Allah, Marduk, Anu, Enki, Enlil and Ra? All of which were their creations, not ours. A potential for a big new type of earthquake in the Pacific has implications for Hawaii and the West Coast in 2024. Visions received of sky-based interjections in the Middle East theatre that may see much disappear there. If that disappearing act unfolds, it will erode religions of all denominations as that illusion collapses with the Israeli narrative. They will continue to threaten and ban us speaking about them. It will only serve to wake up more and those who are awake to delve deeper into the narrative like THI has. With the collapse of the narrative of Israel, not necessarily the state of the mistrust of the religion taking hold then brings in the off-world narrative. Expect that to increase next year as well, but beware it doesn't become a distraction. If we get arrivals and Israel hasn't backed down, don't expect either of the domes to survive. Russia Ireland, the Baltic states, Israel zone and South Africa may see increased activ activity next year as the battle between the light and the dark goes more external. Taiwan may become more prevalent so the banks, the shekel makers, can rake in more funds between them. Potential or probable flare-ups in southern Turkey that may spread further north as well. An interesting line in November maybe foretells something for 2024. Rules adopted by the Democratic National Committee in 2022 leave the DNC as the sole authority to appoint a presidential nominee where that nominee resigns after the August 24 convention. Will there be an August event? But what if there is no election this year at all? We need an enlightened despot with unlimited powers to have all decisions made to the benefit of the people. The greatest concern for me, particularly in Western countries, is that law and order could well collapse, with all government departments in America in particular operating at around only 50%, they may not have the resources to contain it. Their politicians do not have a plan to curtail or correct it either. We at THI will never advocate for violence, as violence is repeating their programmes and dark tendencies. But the people will get angry at the lies and the authorities must take a closer look at the blueprint and arrange meetings as to how we can alleviate it and potentially stop it before the angry stage. Let us all put our pride and ego aside and come together with common sense solutions that will give the people hope. Hope is as rare as common sense now. We can provide the both of them in bucket loads. <clears throat> the transition will never be smooth, but it can be made much simpler 
and easier if actions are taken sooner rather than later. Once the threshold is reached, all hell will break loose and we must work together to prevent that here and now. The old world collapse of every institution on the planet will increase big time next year as well. It will cause panic and fear, but with balance of the self, you will overcome it. Plus, after all, we will need our members to show the way to redemption, so to speak. You've all learned the truth in bite-sized chunks over a period of time. Your responsibility then comes to relay that truth to the baying masses and it all goes to pot. And so the great question next year or this year in America is, will the election go ahead? With two corrupt and fraudulent characters, two corrupt and fraudulent parties, how can the American people vote for those two malfeasant clowns? Is that the best we have to offer the people of this country, or is it indicative of the people? And in my opinion, given all the extensive problems, none of which can be fixed, the 2024 elections here needs to be cancelled altogether. This and other countries need a designated survivor type leader. But the great question is, why does everybody have to die to enact it? They don't, and the blueprint and new actions unfolding behind the scenes now is dedicated to stopping the violence, rioting, deaths and wasted energies that will unfold unless swift actions are undertaken. Biden and Trump, Republican and Democrat are symbols of the old world, and old, repetitive, non-changing ideas. Both are as corrupt as hell, both are old and decrepit, and a symbol of the M-pire, in essence. Aging, riddled with arrogance, copy of a copies, running programs that don't work and never will, it was not designed to. Why would M and his dark minions create a system that worked for anyone but themselves? They wouldn't and they didn't. And we need a new injection of life force and ideas onto this planet that is devoid of any of the old ways, systems, programs, societies, religions, institutions, governance and the people themselves. Guess what? Not one of them worked. Neither the systems or the people in general. Too many idle people sat by and watched the evil unfold all whilst doing nothing to save themselves or soul develop in any natural or organic way. It is and was shameful of how we all left our home to the dark forces and did absolutely nothing. Ignore the few who had the courage to stand up for you, ridiculed, rejected, maligned them to a point of extinction, whilst the majority sat repeating the mainstream media statement-based narrative, masquerading as the truth, when it was far from it. We all knew that within, Yet we all ignored it so as to not stand out from the crowd. The crown of creation with no courage, no convictions, no sense of right and wrong, thinking only of materialistic things and the self only. Where was the self-sacrifice? Did not the Santis warn to develop on a higher plane? We needed people of self-sacrifice. But I find myself asking, 
Where is he? Where are these people whose moral duty is to the all and not the self? And we must overcome that to develop, to emerge onto a higher plane. Strange events will increase next year. No, not Bluebeam, although I would not put it past them to try and turn the tide. It won't work. Strange sky events, stars out of place, an increase in the northern and southern light events. I suspect more of the world will get to witness them. Solar flares will increase that will bring more positive outcomes and upgrades. More time strangeness, more lost keys and personal belongings misplaced. Dreams will have more clarity, visions also. Frequencies of a pleasant nature will begin to encircle you in a spiral dance. Learn how to dance with it, not step on it or on your own toes. You've all been given the tools now with which to make the change and leap. And it's up to you all to use them now as you shouldn't need me anymore. You have to learn to fly yourselves without me supplying the wings or stabilizers. Self mastery is required going forward as you all need to step into your own power and light. The dancing between the two worlds will increase next year, this year. As those who walk it will be required more heavily next year. As preparations for the changes required reaches the threshold or tipping point. <coughs> will that lead to ascension, many will ask. Yet another future-based question. And the reply, as always, is, what are you going to create or manifest? What if it's not a future event at all? What if it's been available for those who are ready since 2016? What is vertical time? Have you connected to it yet? What is the matrix? Have you disconnected from it yet? Have you worked out where the portal is yet? What is the portal and the passage? What is the golden path and are you on it? Faking it and you will not be beneficial going forward. Are you love or fear? Are you truly caring and sharing? Are you service to self or others? Have you spiritually evolved or just played at it? Are you balanced from within or ego, which is external? And these will all become self-apparent from here on in. It will be shown to others as well. There are no more masks. The frequencies and energies born this past year will see to that. There are no more excuses either. It is what it is, and you've been told multiple times over multiple years, indeed, multiple lifetimes. It is what it is will serve you all well next year. You are not expected to know all of the strange events ongoing to you or others. Over time, it reveals itself when you are ready or when safe to do so. All of you have operated within two worlds on a physical basis. You will all have seen that unfold since I warned of it back in 2015. But some have operated within the two worlds on a non-physical basis as well. Preparing for the changes and all eventual outcomes that will increase next year 
for those who recognise it. Those who haven't yet need to revisit past shows that told you everything you needed to hear. As a reminder, try this cryptic piece. Some of you now will be going, oh no, not the cryptic pieces again. Yes. Why? Because it teaches everyone on the level they are at. It shows how much you have really learnt or listened to, which then shows you where you need to learn more. It started off as one, became two, before increasing to three. The three became the two, with the next stage to become the one. All whilst the final one then becomes the three again and rises on vertical time. What was the one, two and three which became the one only then to join two others in the trinity? Are we seeing the fall of the physical world to face a test of the mental and spiritual worlds? A test of mastery over reality? Or will you withdraw into the world of the mind? The rapid ageing of people not in alignment has increased and will increase further. Don't assume it is just the TV stars either. It is all that are not operating in the right way. Anti-aging cream or adrenochrome will not fix that inner malignancy. The work done in April, May, September and October this year will bring further proof and positive outcomes next year. As the spiral dance across the planet impacted those ready for it in a better way will bear more fruit. April next year, this year now, may well be and bring a final act in many ways. Pay closer attention. Worlds merging into one reality will really begin to kick in now in 2024, the final year before 2025 which is the nine and the reverse stage of the back tune from 2012. 2025 is not a free pass. This is not some 5D get out of jail free card. You have to work at it. It's not a guarantee either. 2025 is a window of opportunity only. In essence, that window was open from 2016, but did you see it? 16 to 25, 2025 is also a 9. The emergence of strange people within your lives will come to the fore this year. Meet and greet. Will you recognise them? Will you embrace them? Or will you block and fear them? The spirits, the elementals and other entities turning up around you. Again, will you recognise them? Will you embrace them? Or will you block and fear them? Are they friend or foe? If you block them, it doesn't matter whether they were friend or foe. Focus less on the objects of life and more on the peripherals. Because from there, you will see. It is the overview, how to really see and work out what is unfolding. Two words have come to me for next year, one of which was prevalent in last year's predictions as well. They are endeavour and perseverance. 
Endeavour means to try harder to reach a specific goal or target. Or could it mean the end of ever? Which, depending on whether you operate in love or fear, determines that answer or outcome. Perseverance means you keep going no matter what life throws at you. And these are the words we will all have to adapt to this year, now more than ever. We will be tested, it will be testing, it will be difficult, it will be ugly on steroids. It cannot be any other way. But with, with those two words and an internal strength and determination, we will come through this and prevail. Observe, don't absorb will re be required in monumental doses next year, as will 4555, as will protection of the self be the shielding and centering techniques. A third word came to me in December. The word was precipice. Followed by this next line. 2023 is the last of the normal years. Nothing will be the same again as we cross into 2024. The crossroads appeared to me in vision mode again in December and the divine paths have now become clearer. I watched a movie recently aptly called Leave the World Behind, which depending upon your own state or status can bring two things to the fore. One, our old adversary and the world's worst program and addiction largely done on ourselves, fear, which brings indecision, lack of commitment and manifests bad futures. So leave the world behind for that thing and trait equals fear and remaining on their path, not your path. Love, embracing and integrating and being excited by the changes and awaiting the next journey of discovery. Within this trait, leaving the world behind means the dark party and dance is nearing the precipice. Will you leap it? The journey to no time to live the I'm possible dream. But that movie revealed something deeper and left some who viewed it shocked. In the movie Leave the World Behind halfway through it revealed more of the fear of the Elites. It was stated that no one is in control of the planet anymore. An extraordinary line at an extraordinary time. So why are they revealing it now? Fear. Something I warned of six years ago. In essence, it was all over then for them. They keep repeating the same things, only now they do not and will not work. Their great hopes and important people they had around them are all disappearing back to source. That is and was their greatest fear. Cheating death is no longer an option for them. Those that are left do not carry the aura of the ones departed leaving them feeling very vulnerable on a world that is waking up to their games and reality. Recent murmurs of the Rothschilds wanting to step down are not new, I've mentioned it previously. The Douglas Rushkoff piece we did after he had a meeting with billionaires who were living in abject fear and speaking of underground bunkers told a wider story. They know what is coming. They feel the shift in the energies and frequencies. 
they feel the return of love and they know exactly what has been done on this planet as much as those in the village and some further afield. So what happens next? Well it depends on how much you all want it, does it not? How much do you all want it? Work is underway to try and engage these people and arrange meetings with them to find common ground and chart a path forward. But there are times when I wonder, is there only me and a few who wishes for these changes to actually come to fruition? As the precipice plays out on many levels, what are or have you done to support it? Have you or we done enough? And no, that is not a throwaway line. That is a direct question that should reach into your very soul. But here is a pondering for you all. What if you have to do all of this again? More lifetimes of drudgery. Only the next times without the support from above and beyond here. And remember, you all decide that reality, not me. Just you. Your actions, your non-actions. Your creativity, your non-creativity. And no manifestations. Not striving to be or do something different for the greater good. And all leaves only one option. A repeat of what has gone before will manifest for you. For failing for the umpteenth time to heed the message and the warnings. In 2024, you will all have a deeper understanding of what THI was really all about and the blueprint also. There will be major changes next year and I envision much travel for personal and collective reasons. There will be changes within and of the village itself also next year as repositioning may unfold. My own personal ponderings as I write this at the end of November is expect changes, be prepared to travel, be flexible, be open as my life is about to take a new course. What that entails was not revealed to me in November but I have reached the crossroads again and my path and being is about to change again. Some questions, you all like the questions, and so I'm going to fire them back. Questions for you all to answer honestly as a personal assessment factor in your life. Of what happened in 2023. Did you rise or fall? Did you help or hinder? Did you walk the walk? Did you face reality enough? Did you trust enough? Did you fear too much? Did you dance the demon dance? Did you dance in ego? Did you do enough to protect what you had? Did you create enough? Did you manifest a better future enough? Did you become a driver or a passenger? Did you become deep or shallow? Did you embrace service to self? Did you become service to others? Did you love enough? Did you care enough? Did you support enough? Did you help enough? Did you soul develop enough? Did you engage enough? 
Did you inspire enough? Did you aspire enough? Did you dance the spiral dance? Did you embrace the energies and frequencies enough? Did you integrate enough? Did you become the divine masculine? Did you become the divine feminine? Did you recognize the self enough? Did you see your own progress? What did you see and what did you not see? And so there you have it. Fairly comprehensive roundup of all things 2023, the year of planting the seeds per se. The year of forecasted growth. A year of THI being more significant than you thought. And a year of people coming together, whether on trips or th forums. A year of trials and tribulations, both personal and collective. A year of embracing the harsh truth and reality of this world and yourself. A year when Daniel took the THI meme, it is a journey, not the destination, to a whole new level. A year where Ovi took speedo shorts to eye-watering levels. A year where Katrina made waves and taught the Irish police German. A year where Tara was reclaimed and the castle was slain. And a year where new words were learnt of sweet divinity. Oh Janie, and you're in my friggin' head all day and night. A year where Christina was caught on the hop. A year where Paula, the jet setter, became the nation and promoter of Polar Land. A year where the pulse wave became a reality. A year where we eclipsed this and last year. A year where Team Hair became quantum entangled and broke my bed. Just saying. A year where Roger and the true rule of law and Rita danced across other continents. A year where Alison booked you all in to becoming book ends. A year where Michael, Kevin and Simon blinded us with their mastery of science. A year where Mama Z researched us all to a new level. A year where Susan made THI the main meme. A year where Angela and Glenn came together for longer than two weeks. A year when Zooming came into focus. A year where mystery became more clarity. A year when the wind did blow out the old and in with the new in Ireland. A year of appointments, some disappointments and a much bigger picture. The New Year's resolution from me to you, be better people this year than last year. This was a download I got in the past week and a warning for 2024. And it comes in the form of a song line that cropped up recently. As Joni Mitchell once said these lines, and it will be important for your own awareness, surroundings, friendships, understandings, and in some cases, well-being. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? It will be important to recognise what you have or had, as once it's gone, it's gone. Reminiscence is not the remit for the future thinkers, doers or pathway people, and that is a reminder to you all. 
But isn't it funny we don't remember the good times as much as we do the bad times? The good people and times rarely return. You have to recognise and hold on to them. Bad times and bad people always return and will keep returning until you change you. You may wish to rethink that going forward and protect, cherish, love and embrace the good times you have or had in the now and what are the consequences to you if they are all gone. Do you spiral dance upon the golden path or follow the yellow brick road? One is real and one is the illusion. But what if there's not enough on the golden path? Who will return to teach them? If the few return to teach, where are the way showers? The golden path reminder, it requires soul development done by yourself only. The requirements needed are balanced ego, enhanced love frequencies, enhanced self-sacrifice, enhanced service to others and a moral duty to the all. More love, no fear, standing in your own power, more self-sacrifice, stepping away from the survival mode and into your own source given power. There are people who are guided by higher purpose and there are those who are guided by physicality. One must strive to find the higher purpose with which to guide their actions. The holding pattern we have experienced was your time for you all to prepare. Prepare for what, some of you may ask. I told you all last year in this very type of show, but did you listen? Also, as a reminder, I said the final word for 2023 is growth. Prepare for it and be ready for all event dualities. There was five major events over 2023. Did you recognise them as such? High five went to a new level. The holding pattern is now over and the next phase begins. Those that have risen and prepared will find things easier going forward. Asking where I am going is pointless at this stage. I would ask in return, do you even know where you have been? Some cryptic song lyrics for you all to ponder on. Some different songs. Fading in, fading out on the edge of paradise. A new day will dawn for those who stand long. Dear lady, did you hear the wind blow? And did you know? And yes, there are two paths you can go by. But in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Your head is humming and it won't go. In case you don't know, the pipe is calling you to join him. When you love someone and it goes to waste. But the lights will guide you home and ignite your bones. I will try to fix you. As the window bends to light your way back home. We strive to become part of one world. 
It's the long and winding road that you always walk alone. As I and we dance spirally into 2024, here I go again on my own, going down the only road I've ever known. And that road is a lonely path, but ultimately it leads to freedom. To fly in perpetuity with the stars and suns, to breathe in the golden path, to blaze a trail for those that follow. To reach for the I'm possible dream, despite being scorned and scarred. To look upward, not back. To create, not stagnate. To manifest, not wait. To evolve, not devolve. To emerge, not disappear. Progress will always be the essential requirement in or out of time. This has been the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams. Bye for now. Do you understand the word?